and welcome to Banjo Tooie on the Nintendo 64. I am One Mile Sheep yet again, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is a sequel to what I consider to be one of the absolute greatest games of all time. And uh, while I don't like this nearly as much as I like the original Banjo Kazooie, this is still an incredible time. It is still an incredible experience to play through. You know, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, basically everything about this game is bigger than Banjo-Kazooie. Everything's bigger, some things are better, some things are worse. But I'll get into that as we move into the actual main game. And as you can probably guess, this is a direct sequel to the original title. So, uh, you know, strap down kiddies, we're in for the long haul with this one. This is going to be a goodie. Or so I hope, anyways. Uh, this entire first part is going to be basically nothing but cutscenes, so... um. If you don't care about cutscenes or anything, feel free to skip this part, but first things first, I do want to check to see this screen blurb. That I had to check to see if the widescreen was on, because this game does actually have widescreen options, which means I can actually have this in full screen, you know, ladies and gentlemen, and this is one of the few Nintendo 64 titles that does offer a complete full screen, which is, you know, full widescreen game, which is kind of weird. It's kind of rare to find an older title that has widescreen. But, uh, I digress. Two years have passed since Gruntilda the Witch was defeated by Banjo and Kazooie. After falling from her tower, she was buried underground, where she remains until this very day. Yeah, as I said, this game basically is majority cutscenes for the first couple of parts. Um, we will get again into the gameplay from part, you know, properly get into the gameplay from part three onwards, like I said. But uh, for now, we just get to enjoy all of the nice dialogue. And trust me, when I say this game is darker than Banjo Kazooie, oh my God, this game is darker than Banjo Kazooie. It is a very dark game, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Well, by by this. For kids game standards anyways, a dark game. There's loads of uh there's loads of dark jokes littered around, there's loads of um scenes that are quite questionable. Let's just say that much. What can I tell ya? What can I tell ya? Indeed. Hmm, yes. But I do kinda like the idea of this at the very beginning of the game where Banjo and his friends are all playing poker and whatnot and uh Kazooie's doing a bit of work. Crying wolf there to get some extra bird seed money for herself, which is uh, interesting. Interesting indeed, yo. Hmm. Yes. But um. Yeah, this is gonna be probably the worst part of the LP. I'm gonna say that right away. I I'm not good when it comes to talking over cutscenes. I usually like the cutscenes speak for themselves. But because this part is entirely cutscenes, except for maybe the very end of the part. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be rambling a slight bit. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? So I do apologize about that. But what is going on over here? Hmm, yes. And if you can tell, probably can't guess already, all of this area we are currently in, Spiral Mountain. This is actually in Banjo Tui proper. We are gonna be able to explore properly later online, but, um,. One of the interesting things about Banjo-Tooie is that this doesn't take place on Spiral Mountain in the same vein that Banjo-Kazooie 1 did. Banjo-Tooie actually takes place on the entire island that Banjo lives on as opposed to just this one isolated area with one witch's tower, you know, folks. In fact, Grunty's old tower doesn't even have much to do with this game at all. It's just sort of sitting there. It houses a cheat book, which I'll talk more about later on. That's about it, really. Nothing much else to say. Mm. Yes. That's one of the big problems I saw. Of, uh, like, I love the uh, 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 uh noises the characters make whenever they're talking, but when it comes to Let's Plays and stuff, it means that it's kind of silly for me to... to it, it feels kind of weird for me because I, I like to not talk over cutscenes. But because they're not actually speaking any real dialogue, it, I, it feels wrong for me to not talk over this, you know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen, so... Yeah, I don't know. But, it's here, ladies and gentlemen, we do find out that Grunty from the very original Banjo-Kazooie title... ...isn't the only member of her family! Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, Grunty has a twin sister. Oh, two twin sisters, actually. And, um... Uh, yeah, basically, this is all the setup for this game. This one is obviously a lot more storyline focused compared to Banjo Kazooie 1. It's a lot more focused on the plot, if you will. While Banjo Kazooie 1 was basically your typical, your princess got captured storyline. Well, I say princess got captured, more like your twin sister that you never see again got captured. But uh, this one by here, Banjo Tooie, is an actual full fledged plot with. Uh, where uh, things actually uh, things actually take a turn for the worse in a lot of instances, and uh, one thing I will say about this game that I do prefer over Banjo Kazooie One is the characters. The writing is so much better this time around, ladies and gentlemen. I kid you not. I absolutely adore the writing in Banjo Kazooie. It's very humorous. It's got loads of um. Basically, all the characters in this game have some form of character development, which is a lot more than can be said for a lot of characters in Banjo-Kazooie 1, you know, folks. Like, even the throwaway NPC characters tend to have their own unique little quirks and little traits that uh, sort of makes this feel more like a full-fledged world in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie, where it's just like, oh, we're in isolated, pocketed dimensions now. So, uh... And that's the big theme about this one, folks. That's going to be the big theme of Banjo Tooie. It's not going to be us going through isolated dimension levels in order to collect the MacGuffins. Now we are actually exploring every stage as part of a full fledged world. So, uh, nothing's really closed off from another area. You know, you have one, all of the areas in this game, some way, shape, or form, are interconnected in some way. Which you're going to see a little bit later on down the line. So, uh,. That's gonna be kind of interesting. What can I tell ya? What can I tell ya? Indeed. Wow, Grunty looks a little bit bony. <laughs> I still have no idea how Grunty's alive. Considering she fell off her own tower, now she has no skin. How is she alive? This is maddening. Is it because she's a witch? Or witch is just immortal? She should be melting. It's raining. Water melts, witches, right? This is why I don't listen to my pop media. They all lie to me about the how witches work. I... That's disgusting, by the way. <laughs> that is just disgusting to pop out her eye. Ugh, Ugh horrible. <laughs> her eyeball squeaks with the fly now. Can she use it as a stress ball too? Actually, I don't think that would be good because eyeballs aren't exactly the most durable part of someone's body. If someone tried to do... um. If someone tried to squish that properly, ew, ew, you get eyeball juice all over your hands, ew, that'd be disgusting. Oh god, Mumbo, you would never pass for a Metal Gear Solid character. Me must go, one banjo, and it runs straight in the beeline across the field in direct view of the witch. Good job, Mumbo, good job, 10 out of 10. Ay, 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 ay. But, uh, if you're, as I said earlier on, this game is a lot, and I mean a lot, darker in comparison to Banjo-Kazooie, and we're actually going to come into the biggest reason why this game is a lot darker compared to Banjo-Kazooie, ladies and gentlemen, which is, um, this isn't so much a normal, traditional, save the hero plot, you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting storyline that involves, uh, well, it involves a certain aspect of uh, the basically a certain aspect of storytelling you never get to see in kids' games that often. So uh, that can be quite interesting. I'm being as vague as I physically can right now, ladies and gentlemen, until it actually happens on screen. I don't want to spoil it. God, who do you take me for? Some B-grade Let's Player? God damn! I'm in the Super Elite Let's Players, son. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm not. I, I, I'd like to think I am, though. <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Ball's got a direct shot. Eek. That's not cool, man. They, they, they wouldn't kill bottles. No, it's a kid's game. They're not going to do anything of that nature. They're not going to kill off one of the most important characters from the first game, are they? Nah. Hold on, sis, I'm nearly there. I 
just been to blast that bear. Yeah, you, did, you didn't really go do a good job. You didn't even know some walk out of the house. I don't know how she didn't know some walk out of the house. She was looking at the front door. Did she just sort of close her eyes when she shot the energy blast and hope to God it, whack, it hit them? I don't know. That, 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 that always confuses me how she never notices the fact that Banjo and crew got out of the house, but... Um, Good God, the giant digger drill is uh, e. <laughs> That's menacing looking. And we do get to see that a great deal later on in the game anyway, the drill. So trust me, the drill does play a big role a bit later on in the game. But uh, that is literally end game stuff I'm talking about here. I'm not going to talk about that because I don't want to spoil things. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Indeed. Mm, yes. Mumbo head hurts. So yeah, Banjo's house is ruined. Oh, I just I just finished paying the mortgage. <laughs> I have to take out a second mortgage now to fix it up. Why? Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, but there's Bottles. Like I said, he got whacked entirely by uh, Gruntilda's energy blast. And you know the big, the worst thing about Bottles in this game? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he's dead. Literally, they killed off one of the most important characters from Banjo Kazooie. Now, this is a dark note to start the game on. Starting the game on one of the main characters dying, and Kazooie saying he wasn't anyone's favorite character anyway. That's that's bloody cruel, Kazooie. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. This is where the game sort of goes into its full plot here, and it's a revenge story. Now, this is a really we weird change of pace from the original game, where the game was literally a light-hearted, oh, I gotta save my sister, yay! We're actually going to flat out take down Gruntilda just to get revenge on good old Bartles here, and uh, Banjo saying it's not gonna be so easy this time. Oh boy, he is he so, he's so true with that. This game is not as easy as Banjo-Kazooie won. <laughs> But there we are, now we are in full gameplay, we are in full control of Banjo himself, and uh... You went to star a Banjo Kazooie, your name wasn't in the title, Bottles, you fool. Basically, all of our moves from Banjo Kazooie return, and we get every single move from the original game right at the get go. I love it when this. I love the fact this game does this, because then you know, if you play Banjo Kazooie, you can actually start playing Banjo Tooie as an extension of the original game. I think more sequels should do this. I love that. So you have everything from the first game, and then later down the line, you get more abilities to add on to it. I prefer that, but um. Yeah, we start off in Spiral Mountain just the same as last time, although we do this, this things are a little bit more bleak. Like the music is a little bit more down, you know, it's, we got more of a down a tune of the Spiral Mountain theme. And there's not nearly as many things to collect in the area, but uh, we do get introduced to the main bad guys we're going to be seeing throughout the course of this game. Those green minion fools are basically what's going to be littering over the overworld. And they're basically Grunty's new minions. They will be wandering around the area. You just have to kill them whenever you come up to them. And uh, if you kill them, they drop honeycomb. Honeycomb will be your health. You will be able to heal using this stuff. And I know I'm kind of repeating stuff from the first game, but you know, some people may be watching this LP without watching the first LP. So, uh, you know, this pad by you is a shock jump pad. You basically hold down the A button, you can jump all the way up really high. And what I just collected was a Cheeto page. These will enable us to go to Cheeto here after we find enough of them, five of them to be exact. And we will be able to gain access to cheat codes. These cheat codes are basically our power-ups in this game. And don't get me wrong, they, they don't don't just trust me, they're called cheat codes, but I wouldn't really consider them to be cheating to use, you know, folks, because the game doesn't the game actually actively doesn't punish you to use them, you know. The game wants you to be using these cheat codes whenever possible, but uh, 
I digress. That is it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. I know there's been a lot of cutscenes in this part. This next part is quite a few as well. But uh, we are going to get into the the real nitty gritty of the game fairly soon. You know, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you guys don't mind the wait for that. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish people. And I'll hopefully catch you all next time. And I hope you all enjoy this new LP. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you after. Bye.